I share lots of content about Copilot for Microsoft 365 here, and invariably a lot of those videos get at least some comments like this one that starts, Copilot sucks, and then lays out some rationale for an alternative AI product that's better. Everyone is entitled to their opinion, and frankly, many of my videos also include elements that indicate I think some parts of Copilot suck too. But I'm still very positive about this technology. I continue to recommend it and support its adoption, both through videos here and my work as a technology advisor and consultant. And I think there are a number of good reasons why even the most skeptical about Copilot should consider it versus the majority of other generative AI tools. So in this video, I want to ask the question, why choose Copilot? And if this is a tool that does indeed suck for some people, who are those who should be buying it? But first, a quick introduction. My name is Nick DeCorsi. I'm the owner of Bright Ideas Agency, a digital transformation consulting company focused on the needs of smaller businesses. I'm also the author of Who's in the Copilot Seat, a guidebook for small and medium-sized business leaders on how to adopt AI technology. Check out the links down below if you're interested in learning more. I've been using Microsoft 365 Copilot every day for nearly 12 months, and in that time, I have found it an indispensable tool. It makes accessing the latest generative AI capabilities easy where I would already be working in apps like Word or Outlook. And as I've laid out here before, Copilot in Teams has radically improved my workflow on many tasks, helping me to keep on top of meetings and allowing me to quickly add value from meeting transcripts to save lots of time. Copilot leverages our Microsoft 365 data to great impact, but is built with extensibility in mind, and with changes like those I recently covered here in products like Graph Connectors, building AI tooling that is truly integrated into everything you do is now within the reach of any business. However, I've also continued to use other platforms like ChatGPT, as I don't find Copilot to be the best tool for all problems. I think other options like Claude often do better than Copilot with long form text. Gemini offers capabilities to integrate with Google's properties that Copilot will likely never match. And Bing plus Copilot is no match for perplexity on some tasks. But beyond this, I am generally interested in exploring AI technology, so I enjoy trying out new tools, of which there are a mind-blowing number, both from established players and new AI-focused startups alike. I believe that many members of this channel's audience have a similar general interest in AI tools, and many use a wide range of different platforms. The content here certainly has a Microsoft focus bias, but neither do I solely advise my clients on Microsoft technologies, nor do I believe Microsoft's AI solutions are all you need. But when we think about technology for businesses versus enthusiastic or skilled individuals, the considerations we have in what is the right path need to change. Just as few businesses will choose to trade in all their Windows desktops for Linux machines, the more niche approaches to AI will be suitable for some, but the majority will be seeking something a bit more broad-based. The reality is that the average office worker just isn't that interested in technology. A tool like Microsoft 365 Copilot is designed to bring AI to everyone, even those who have really no interest in AI. Those who are AI enthusiasts, those users who perhaps use tools like the open source fabric project that we've covered here before, or local models with Olama, to dial in every possible option in their AI use, might not be that impressed by Copilot. But that's because Copilot is a product that has probably been designed to offer 80% of the features that 80% of users need. For the other 20%, there are definitely other options, more powerful and more customizable options. But I would argue that even for those who have the interest to get these set up, if you're rolling out AI for a business, there are very good reasons to deeply consider the path you take before jumping in with both feet on those niche and highly customizable product options. There are four big reasons I think you should consider adopting Copilot for Microsoft 365 over many other options. Let's review what they are. Before that though, if you're finding this video useful, it would be great if you give it a like. And if you want to see more like this, please do subscribe to the channel. 
The most important feature of Copilot is its integration into the whole Microsoft stack, and the ubiquity of that stack across most businesses means there is extremely low friction in getting started. Assuming you already are an organization with Microsoft 365, and if you're not, that might be a good reason to steer clear of Copilot unless you want a monumental adoption challenge. Getting started with Copilot might be as simple as just assigning some licenses in the Microsoft 365 Admin Center. Because most organizations don't truly have their data estate in order, most of the time this adoption process will be a bit more challenging from a technology perspective. And it's important to not ignore the importance of upskilling your employees in terms of their understanding of generative AI. But the fact you can just assign a license and Copilot will start appearing in those apps your teams are already using makes the process as simple as it really can possibly be. I've also made a video before about the steps that you need to go through to prepare for Copilot, and I'll link that down below if that's something you need. Once a user is enabled for Copilot, it just appears where they're already working. It'll show up in apps like Outlook or Word, and it starts leveraging their existing data. There's no new platform to learn, nowhere new to log in, there's no copying and pasting, and no complex workflows jumping through hoops between multiple third-party apps. They just open Microsoft 365 and then hit the Copilot button and they can start using AI. It's also important to consider what's going on in the background. If you already use Microsoft 365, then it's safe to assume that you already understand how Microsoft interacts with and protects your data. You're already comfortable with your data being stored in the Microsoft Cloud, and you've already worked to ensure that cloud data remains compliant with any best practices or regulations you need to adhere to for your type of business or industry or location. In the vast majority of cases, you turn on Copilot and nothing much changes. Microsoft isn't going to start using your data any differently to how they did before. Your compliance controls are going to keep working much as they have. Everything you understand of Microsoft 365 and their policies to their security and compliance tools effectively applies to your Copilot usage most of the time. It is important to point out though that how well this works is entirely down to how well you've got this keyed in ahead of turning on Copilot. And most organizations have at least some work to do to fully meet the best practices they should and should probably work on this whether they're gonna implement Copilot or not. But with any other service, this is incredibly more complicated. There are certainly other providers that have similarly high standards in these areas as Microsoft does. If you choose to buy ChatGPT Enterprise, for example, then you can end up with similar control of your data as you have with Microsoft. But you have to go through the added complication of reviewing their policies, ensuring they meet your compliance needs, and getting everything set up and turned on how you need it in order to be safe. And then outside of this, there are any number of AI apps, new AI startups, and free services that are a minefield in these sorts of areas. Many of them have capabilities and features that Microsoft 365 Copilot lacks, but they also lack usage terms that protect your data and any track record of being good stewards for the businesses they've worked with. And when it comes to those AI startups and their feature-rich new services or even free tools, you do all the work to implement those capabilities and to do so safely, and what's to say they aren't going to vanish or be absorbed into a competitor with more lax standards six months down the line? Even if we think about open source tools you might be considering, these are only as good as the community keeping them updated. You also potentially open up a new type of supply chain risk into your environment. And that's not to say that smaller providers or open source are bad. In many cases, the truth is the exact opposite. They just come with a set of risks that no reasonable person would assign to Microsoft 365. And if your organization isn't used to those risks, then some wowsy AI feature isn't necessarily a good reason to pick today to be when you start to take them on. At this stage, two things seem clear. Microsoft has committed wholeheartedly to Copilot, and Microsoft isn't going anywhere anytime soon. Last, one of the big challenges in the whole AI space right now is whether the companies that made the models had the right to use the data they did in training them.
Rights holders for lots of different types of content assert that companies like OpenAI used copyrighted content illegally. But companies like OpenAI claim exemption through fair use as their technology transforms the underlying copyrighted material. All the while, they are setting up licensing deals with rights holders for future training, and all of this will work itself out in the courts. But this is potentially a big minefield for AI users, as it's possible the outputs of AI models contain content that is owned by other rights holders. And this is probably a much bigger issue for business-oriented use than it is for individuals who are just using a personal ChatGPT account every once in a while. However, with Microsoft's Copilot copyright commitment, they have asserted that commercial Copilot users can be defended from copyright claims involving their use of Copilot outputs by Microsoft. This is significant, as an around $3 trillion company, we can be sure that Microsoft has greater resources to indemnify us than pretty much any other non-governmental organisation on Earth. Microsoft is not unique in offering similar protections, but again, this is an issue of scale and reputation. A new AI startup really has nothing to lose in promising its products' outputs cannot infringe copyrights held by others. Anyone starting a new LLC does so because they want a limited liability company where their liability is limited to the resources of the business. A business with $1,000 in the bank can only be held liable for $1,000 of indemnification should you end up on the wrong end of a lawsuit from the New York Times, for example. That's not good for them, but it's doubly not good for you. And what about businesses in other jurisdictions to your own? In many cases, all bets would be off. Of course, this is not legal advice, and you should definitely seek out your own if this is an issue that you run into. So these are four really important reasons why Copilot is a truly sensible choice for many, many businesses. Even if there might be any number of services out there that could be quicker or more feature rich or more quickly updated to the, the latest capabilities. As with anything, you should seek to choose the solution that best meets your needs, but you should not ignore these types of factors when doing so. Understanding all the options for your co-pilot adoption, including many of the non-technical factors like the types of product terms and support you can expect from a provider like Microsoft, can be a big challenge. Whether you're new to Copilot, needing help with an ongoing adoption, or looking for a strategic advisory partner to help you achieve the most with these technologies in the future, I welcome you reaching out to learn more about how my services can be of value to you. Check out the links below where you can find more content like my currently free AI adoption course for executives, alongside opportunities to book me for one-on-one -on -one technology coaching, group training, or project and consulting services, including Microsoft 365 Copilot adoption. As a consultant focused on Copilot, I've got no reservations in highlighting what I think is wrong with it as a product. I do that here a lot, as even though I do truly believe it's a good choice for most businesses using Microsoft 365, I want my viewers here and my clients to have an accurate and complete picture. But we have to remember that if we want all those positives I listed, the easy integration into Microsoft 365, the security and compliance focus, the long-term availability and the copyright protection, then Microsoft has to be more restrained and conservative in what it is doing than many competitors. In comparison to the Microsoft of five years ago, we're looking at a monster that has been awoken by AI. But in comparison to hungry AI startups, this is still largely a risk-averse juggernaut that turns at the speed of a supertanker. And don't get me wrong, Microsoft has definitely made missteps. The whole debacle about recall, for example. The research I highlighted here recently shown how Copilot can be attacked. However, we can be sure none of these individual issues is going to bring down Microsoft. We can be assured they are incentivized to fix them. And frankly, it's not necessarily the case that the smaller players do any better. They just aren't looked at as hard by so many people. If you are one of those people who enjoys tinkering with the latest tools in a bid to fully optimize your work more rapidly than Microsoft's Copilot products will ever help you to, then go for it, but do so with a full understanding of the additional risk you're opening your business and your data to, and ensure you commit to sufficient time, not just to playing with new tools, but to understanding their policies, their data protection, and even their company's background and operating location. 
No one in your company is going to congratulate you for saving a few hours of extra time each week if you did so by inadvertently leaking all their private data or getting them sued by an angry rights holder. If you're a business owner or IT admin, please do ensure you understand the potential of AI enthusiasts adding risky shadow IT problems to your business. The value of your data to feed AI has never been greater, and unless you tightly lock down your assets, both with technology and policy, your potential for inadvertent data leakage should not be underestimated. The best barrier to this you can put into place is to implement AI tools like Copilot for your business so that your employees don't need to go rogue on this issue. I'm going to continue to use and recommend Copilot, while also continuing to highlight the ways in which it does suck versus many competitors. But the important context here is any business technology exists in a landscape where the actual functional part of the technology is only a small part of the picture. There are any number of factors or risks where a technology purchase must check boxes in order to be a truly appropriate tool to implement. What Copilot lacks in technology versus some other services, it more than makes up for in being part of a robust suite of tools that help your business reduce risk, maximise compliance, and use AI in a responsible way. All factors that sometimes get a little ignored while enthusiasts are tinkering with other AI systems. What do you think about this? Have I changed your mind from being in the Copilot sucks camp? Or are the factors I've outlined unimportant in your view? Let me know down in the comments. Thanks so much for watching through to the end. This marks the last video I'll be publishing in our second year of having a YouTube channel. Thank you so much for supporting what I do here. I hope it adds value for you. And remember to check out my live Q&A to celebrate this milestone, which is being held on September 6th at 4pm Eastern on YouTube. Until the next video, as we start our third year together. Bye bye.